So now we're going to talk about values as part of your organizational strategy. We talked about vision, where you're trying to go. We talked about mission, how are you going to get there. And now it comes down to really getting alignment on how the organization runs and how it's actually going to implement uh, the changes for the future. So as you can see, I've written a few notes here. Uh, values can be thought of guiding principles, things that guide how your people act. And the really useful thing with values is that it serves as an in or out statement. It gives people a lot of flexibility into how to act because they know what to do, but on the other side, they also know what not to do. Uh, so for example, if you're saying one of your values is customer service is most important, which means you're gonna do anything that supports customer service. And anything else, if it doesn't do that, then you're not gonna do it. So you have free reign as an employee to do anything that's in the interest of customer service. That's just one example. Another way to think about values are the culture, is what do people care about internally? So uh, if you're trying to create a culture, uh, if you're a small business growing up, then it's largely derived from you as the, as the business owner, the CEO. They will take your culture cues from you and they will probably come from the things that you care about and that you're passionate about. Whereas a larger organization's culture will be derived from the people that are actually inside of it. And culture can be changed, but uh, the key to changing culture is actually reinforcing the culture, and we'll get in that later. Uh, the next question that I would urge you to think of is, how does your desired culture differ from actual? So you might say, we care about our customers, we care about our employees, we care about high performance, we care about teamwork, we care about family, we care about personal health, but does that actually show up in your people? So the only way to know that is, to ask or to ask varying degrees because you might see it one way whereas everybody else might say you're you're talking the talk but you're not walking the talk and that goes into how to reinforce a culture in the future so look at your organization and see the things that you care about and this is a useful exercise of course as part of the strategic planning process but to say you know what are the things that guide our behavior what are the things that we really care about as part of an organization so it might be performance, pardon me, I write like a boy. Okay, and we mentioned uh, customer satisfaction. What are some other things that you can think about in your organization that you care about, your people care about? Fun, fun's a good one. Family. challenges or professional development. Okay, so think of your organization and think of the things that internally your people say that we care about. So these do go in line with the vision statement, uh, but this is really practically how are, uh, what are the behaviors in your organization? And then look, how does your actual culture currently differ from what you want it to be or what you think it is? For example, if you value challenges in professional development, are there really opportunities for people to be challenged and to grow? So a way to look at this and a way to implement it in your organization is, are you talking the talk? Are you walking the talk? As in, are you actually doing the things? And then how are you rewarding that? Now here's, here's what I mean when you say, what do you mean rewarding? So you might say you care about one behavior, but if you're incentivizing the wrong thing, if you're incentivizing, uh, let's say you say uh, one of these is work-life balance, okay? And you value work-life balance, you say you work-life balance, but you're actually uh, promoting or rewarding the people that are workaholics, you're doing something that's different from the culture and the values that you care about. So I'll just say that one more time. If you uh, are valuing, you say you value work-life balance, or you're valuing anything, and then you're rewarding a different or an opposite kind of behavior, then your people don't know how to act, and they're gonna fall in line with whatever gets rewarded. So, if you're trying to incorporate some new values, some new guiding principles, and a new culture, as part of your organization, you need to look at where the desired uh, 
the actual behavior differs from the desired actions. And then you need to not only walk the walk, you need to talk the talk, but you need to reward and enforce the positive behavior that you want to see. And the positive behavior is when you look at what your values are, what does it mean in very practical terms to live those values? If somebody was work-life balance oriented, what would that look like? If, some, if you valued family, what would that look like? And how could you enforce it and reward it? If you valued fun, how could you enforce that and reward that? So those are the things that you can practically do when you're looking at where your values are right now and how you want to change them for the future. Look at what you can do, what that behavior looks like in action. And then what can you do as an organization, as a management team, as a leadership team to enforce that behavior and reward that behavior so people will start taking new actions in line with the new reward system and the new values that you want to create. So another thing that uh, I haven't mentioned yet is negative behaviors. So there are things, values or uh, ways of being in your organization that are negative and they're not conducive to your organization that you might obviously not say that they're part of your values, but it's how people act. So whether it's something that you were rewarded in the past or not, identifying the positive values as well as the negative values is just as important. And when you identify what those negative values are, you need to get them out of your organization. You need to look at where you're going as part of your vision, as part of your future. And to get there, a lot of time means removing negative values. Maybe it means that people have a certain way of working that's not conducive to what you want to do in the future. And sometimes you just need to get rid of the people that are holding back your change. And we'll talk about change management later on. But look at the positive values that you have as part of your organization as well as the negative values and enforce the ones you want that are positive and be just as sure to remove the ones that are negative. And if there are people that are enforcing those negative behaviors, you might have to get them out of the way too. But one thing is for sure that if you're trying to create organizational change and you're trying to make uh, accomplish your vision and grow your organization in whatever way, shape or form, values are the cornerstone to getting alignment for your whole thing. So it's really important to not uh, miss the values piece when you're building your strategy because that's the glue that's gonna hold your people together, it's gonna to hold your plan together, and it's gonna create that environment with people because people are what gonna make the change um, to help you be successful in your planning and successful in your implementation. So statement of values, they're guiding principles, it drives your culture, and it's effectively an in or out statement that people can use to empower themselves to know what to do and how to act. So I hope that helps and I look forward to sharing with you in the next video.